These days, it seems like absolutely everything and anything is primed and ready to become an investment. People are trading sports cards and Pokemon cards like crazy. NFTs have completely taken off and have sold for tens of millions of dollars. Cryptocurrency is now a household term and it's a normalized alternative to more traditional investment vehicles. But what about art? I don't hear anybody really talking about art outside of NFTs. In recent decades, desirable art pieces have actually appreciated faster than the S&P 500. Masterworks is an online investing platform that buys art sets it up with the SEC as a legitimate investment vehicle, and then allows normal people to buy shares in it. They actually reached out to me to sponsor this video. And until I got their email, I hadn't really thought a lot about art as an investment. But of course, like, why would I? I mean, when you think about investing, do you think about art? High-end art pieces are typically extremely expensive, and they're reserved for the ultra-wealthy people to consider. I'm not going to wake up one morning and decide to invest in a Monet instead of an index fund. It's just not an option. It's not something that crosses my mind, but now is it an option? Full disclaimer here, Masterworks asked me to make a review video on their investment platform and service. I specified that the only way I would agree is if I was allowed to say whatever I wanted in a totally candid conversation with you. So thank Future Brendan here, and the intent was for Masterworks to sponsor that video, but after they watched it, they decided they didn't want to sponsor it. The reason they didn't want to sponsor it is they said that no one wanted to watch this video, that didn't cover any topics that anyone wanted to see. So you tell me after watching it if this is something that you wanted to see or not, and if this was worthwhile. I decided to post it anyway, even without the sponsorship, because I liked the video. I thought I did a good job, but you tell me. All right, back to the video. First, let's talk about how Masterworks actually works. You sign up with an account with Masterworks, and then they actually call you and make sure that you're a good fit. So they ask you a few questions, they kind of vet their people a little bit, then you're in. Now that you're in, you actually have access to the art that they've purchased in the form of buying shares of the pieces that they already have, and you get an equity stake in them. Plus, you have access to their secondary market where you can buy other people's shares of art that they've already bought into, and now they've decided that they want to sell. And that secondary market is kind of like a little miniature stock market just for art that they own. The typical target holding period for them for each piece of art that they buy is three to 10 years. Then after that period is over and they sell that art, then you get your cut of the profit. Masterworks and City did a study and found out that art is apparently a really stable asset class. I didn't know that was a thing. I had no concept of art as a stable or unstable asset class before now. But what that means is it's not really volatile. Like a lot of other alternative investments, a lot of those that are really popular right now are crazy volatile. Volatile. Whenever you're investing with them, you can buy ownership chunks in each piece of art for as little as $20 each and can legitimately say that now you own a little bit of this amazing art piece because you do. It's not up in your house, but you own it. Then you just hang out and hopefully over time it appreciates and when it sells, you make money. After I learned about Masterworks, I was just curious to know like, are other people doing this? Do they have a lot of competition? Like what does the marketplace for this look like as far as buying shares of online artwork? So I did a little bit of research and I look for something else that's an alternative investment, but specifically tailored to the art world. First off, you can just buy art. Like you can go and physically go to that auction and buy the entire piece of art. And in the meantime, you've got art on your wall. That was always the case. And the potential for an online marketplace for that does make that same process easier and kind of makes it feel like online shopping. So that's one thing, but it's still that same single asset, just like it always was. So you might spend that same $15,000 as the minimum deposit is on Masterworks and have all your art in one basket. So to speak. In contrast, you could spend the same amount of money and have a much more diversified art portfolio and have it vetted by the professionals at Masterworks, not just your opinion of what you think good art is. As far as online marketplaces go, I did find some other ones that do some vaguely similar stuff. So Singulart is one of those, singulart.com, and it's really just like I talked about before where it's an online marketplace for actual art pieces, which is fine. Like if you're actually wanting to own the art to have it hung up in your closet or in your hallway or somewhere, wherever people hang art, probably not in the closet, then you can go that route and you can pick that. It's probably not going to be an investment at that point. It's probably just because you think it's cool. In which case, to me, I would rather just get a print of it and pay like 300 bucks than to pay 30,000. But you do you. Another interesting option I found that I wasn't aware of before is investing in culture with this company called Otis. And so they have this like really kind of eclectic mix of things that are like, I guess I would call them recent vintage, like certain video games and other kind of like 
like pop culture items that I guess I can see are collectibles, but to me feel a lot more vague as far as what's suddenly gonna become something valuable and something that's just belonging in a yard sale somewhere. It's interesting and it's quirky, but I'm not interested in that as an investment, seriously. And without going down all of the possible rabbit holes that are out there right now as far as alternative investment options, I was talking to a buddy about this and he, <laughs> <laughs> he gave me a heads up on this thing that is real. So try and track with me here because this is a real investment where people are spending real money. You can buy, breed, and race electronic racehorses with actual pedigrees and unique characteristics in the form of non-fungible tokens. What is that sentence that I just said? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's this is a real thing, but that's the kind of like outlandish, crazy stuff that's actually popular right now. And compared to that, investing in shares of art pieces to me seems really like rooted and secure and tame. Next, let's talk about some of the appealing factors of Masterworks. So like I mentioned before, historically better returns than the S&P 500. That's kind of amazing to me. It has a low correlation with the stock market. So what that means is art in general, like the art market, as far as collectibles go, it doesn't track with the stock market. If the stock market goes down, it doesn't mean that the art market is necessarily going down. Like they're independent things. So that's really good in case you have a lot of money in the stock market because this is like really diversifying your portfolio to get completely outside of that into a completely different asset class so that you don't have all your eggs in that one basket. I really need to test out that claim that having all your eggs in one basket is a bad thing. Like I'm imagining running around an obstacle course like holding a basket full of eggs. I don't know if anyone's ever done that. Probably need to try it. Another appealing factor is that second market that I mentioned before. So the fact that you can get out of your shares early if you want to, or you can pick up shares from other people if you want to, is a really cool thing. I know initially whenever they first started a few years ago, that wasn't like up and running yet, but it's there now. So I've got an account and I could go in there and see they're selling this many shares at this price of this art piece. So I think before that was a little bit of a turnoff for people because once the equity in that piece of art was sold, like it's done, you can't get into it. You can't really get out of it either until it sells, but now that's a much more fluid process. Now let's talk about the not so appealing factors. First off is a 1.5% flat annual fee. Compared to something like index funds that I typically invest in, this is actually a massive fee. So I know 1.5% sounds small, but I like to have my fees at or below like around 0.3%. So this is technically five times more than that. Also an initially unappealing factor that actually makes sense is a 20% cut of the profit that Masterworks gets when it's sold. And so initially I was like, that seems kind of heavy, like 20% off the top to themselves. Obviously, like they have to make money over and above this annual fee. There's not like a membership fee that you have to pay. So that's everywhere they're getting their money from is those two things right there. But then I kept reading and kept thinking about it. And if they didn't do that, then they wouldn't have an incentive for the value of the asset to go up. So this is actually an accountability measure as much as it is a profitability thing for them, because otherwise they could just buy whatever piece. Like they wouldn't otherwise have any motivation for the piece to go up in value. They could just buy and sell things because you want them not because the rest of the world wants them. And it could be this kind of twisted, like manipulative structure. But the fact that they're also depending on the value of the piece going up makes their assessment of it that much more important so that they get that same payoff. A third thing I alluded to before is unless you sell your shares on that secondary market, then technically your equity is like locked up in that piece until they sell it. So obviously the secondary market is there. There's no obligation that anybody's gonna buy the shares if you wanna get out of them. But if you can't sell them on that secondary market, then technically the money is locked locked into that piece and you're just kind of hoping that they sell it. So you're probably not going to use money that you need anytime soon to invest with Masterworks because you don't know what that time frame is going to be to get it back. The final factor is the $15,000 minimum deposit. So I had to think about this for a little while and try and really get a grasp on it. But what this means is once you're in, yes, the shares are as little as $20 each, but the minimum deposit to start investing with them is 15 grand. And compared to something like the stock market, this is a pretty high barrier of entry because some of these funds like Vanguard funds and other ones will have like a thousand dollar minimum deposit, a five hundred dollar minimum deposit, things like that. So that's not totally unheard of. Fifteen thousand is a lot more, but we have to remember that this isn't the stock market. This is the art market. So compared to buying an actual Banksy or Monet or any other like name brand art piece, this is actually really cheap. So it's sort of a different concept to think about here. But if I'm thinking of a barrier to entry for a normal person to try and start investing with them, that's a fairly large amount of money that you need to have liquid to just get in the door and start investing. So who is this?
this for? Who's the kind of person that wants to invest in art? Well, I think this is really the service you've been looking for if you've always wanted to invest in high-end art, but don't have hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to do it. That's kind of what it's taken up until now. So to have that as your frame of reference and to go down to, I only need 15 grand, that's pretty great. If you've been an aspiring art investor, now's your chance. It could also honestly just be for somebody who has a sizable amount of money in the stock market, maybe in some real estate, and they're just looking for another asset class. Like I said, it's not terribly volatile and it's not well correlated to the stock market. So it can do its own thing independent of the stock market. People are saying right now that a lot of different stuff is bubbles, that the stock market is a bubble, it's gonna pop. Inflation just hit 5.3% or something like that. So to get into another asset class might be really appealing to some people. And if you're thinking right now that that's gotta be like one in a million people, I, I don't know, it might be, but Masterworks has had over 170,000 people sign up. So that's a lot of people that have $15,000 to pony up and start investing. Finally, what will I do? Right now, I'm personally still almost 100% invested in the stock market. No real estate rentals, no crypto, no NFTs, no sports cards of any value, no Pokemon cards, even though as a kid, I liked Pokemon. I just never bought the cards. I'm like the plain oatmeal of investing, like no blueberries on top, no brown sugar, no nothing. And the statistics that I've read in the last few weeks about Masterworks and art investing in general are like very impressive, are very good. I'm still planning to stick with my same old plan. In theory, I could and possibly should be more open to alternative investments. But once we have more invested overall, I think I could be a little bit more sort of receptive, if that makes sense. But let me know what you think. Does this strike your fancy? Have you ever invested in art or have you wanted to invest in art, especially art that's actually vetted by professionals and has a reason to go up in value, not just like something you found at an art show somewhere? Also, there's been a little Easter egg. This whole video, if you've made it this far, have you noticed the Easter egg that I put in the background specifically for this video? No? Okay, I've had this awesome portrait behind me over here. It's a portrait of myself as a lumberjack just sitting there in the background, conspicuously. So speaking of art, this is the current extent of my art collection, and it's just a ton of fun for me to have around. My friend is an artist and an art teacher, and he made this for me as a gift, and it's just incredible. This lumberjack theme, like me as a lumberjack, is just because I love lumberjack things, and we did like a version of the lumberjack games for my bachelor party, actually, and I just think it's super fun. But please don't get your hopes up, because despite its excellence and pedigree, this piece will not be available on Masterworks anytime soon, and it remains in my personal gallery, this YouTube studio. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in some other alternative approaches to more common financial services, check out these two videos on Yada Savings and Prize Pool. They're these new takes on an old concept of a savings account, and they're really interesting. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. Bye.